Hi everybody, Nam here, and today we're going to be talking about magic with Android Netrunner. So Android Netrunner is a card game that I enjoyed playing for a while. I even made some tutorial videos and strategy segments for that as well. It was a sad day when FFG announced that Android Netrunner was going to be end of life and probably a lot sooner than it would have expected. I'm not going to speculate as to why, the reasons, you know, any of the politics around that. The end sad state is it's not a game that is alive anymore. And Netrunner is actually a great game. I was super impressed because it's like an asymmetrical game. I don't need to explain all of this. I have tutorials on the game. You can go watch those if you care. So today I wanted to talk about a trick that I entitled Wayland Overture. And we'll explain all of the stuff about the trick after we watch it. All right, here we go. Hi everybody, Nam here, and today we're going to be doing magic with Android Netrunner. And today we have a Wayland Corporation with us, it's the Argus Security, and they have four cards at NHQ. And these four cards are Hostile Takeover, Sealed Vault, another Sealed Vault, and another Hostile Takeover. Now the thing is, what we want to do as the Wayland Corporation is we want to put our agendas inside of the vault. I know for anybody who actually knows how to play this game, that doesn't make any sense at all. But just for the story of this magic trick, this is what we're doing. I was trying to figure out what cards to use for this. And so the normal version of the trick, you just need two sets of contrasting pairs. And I was like, OK, I'll just use some agendas and this other thing. But luckily, I was like, wait, I can use the sealed vault. And conceptually, you can put things in a sealed vault. Makes perfect sense, right? I think hopefully there's an explanation that I do later. And if not, I'll address it in the vlog after the video. Here we go. OK, so we have the vault here. And we're going to go ahead and place the agendas inside of the vault. OK? And now, basically, Argus does not want the agendas leaking out too early. So they're going to keep things inside of the vault as long as they can until they are ready to bring it out. And now let's pretend that Argus Security has a chance to basically um, get all of their agendas advanced and ready to go. So now they can take them out of the vault. And you know now, as you can take a look, Hostile Takeover is on the top and the bottom. And if I go ahead and show you, the vault cards are now in the middle, and hostile takeovers are on the top and the bottom. What you may not have realized is that this is obviously a hostile takeover. This is definitely a vault. This is also a vault too, but the other hostile takeover wasn't just any hostile takeover. It was actually a government takeover. And those have been unleashed outside of the vault. So now Argus can take over the government. OK, so I did not address the thing that I thought I was going to address in the video. But let's just talk about that really quick. If you play this game, you can't have an asset, which I believe is what the sealed vault is, in the same server as an agenda. So you'd never be able to do this. I did take some liberties from this version of the trick. But uh, first things first. I was first exposed to this through it's been Harpon so long Hong's since book, I played the game. Principia. And I think he has a trick in there called King's Overture, which is based on the overture trick that was done by Max Maven or Phil Goldstein. I don't know if it's the real or the original name of Max Maven. I'm not sure if he had changed it or if that's just his stage name or whatever, but people know him as Max Maven now. So this is my version of Overture. The thing is, Harpan Ong's version has uh, an, a couple of extra added twists, and that's why he's able to call it the King's Overture. But then the original version is way simpler, and it's just Overture. And the concept is you take two contrasting pairs, like, you know, black eights and like, red jacks or something. And you basically just insert one pair face up into the other pair in between. And then you just do this count. 
and the way that I've been performing the actual trick with playing cards is I'll do that and then I'll do one regular count so nothing suspicious fan them out show them basically it makes it look like hey there's nothing suspicious when I reverse count them and then when I reverse count them the second time I say okay but there's this weird thing that happens and then I give it a little shake and then when I give it a little shake that's when the magic happens and basically the cards that were face down on the outside are now face up on the inside basically they swap places and they swap facing directions so that's the concept it's a very quick and simple trick like it takes no time at all like you can show somebody this in like 15 seconds and um, if you want to milk it and slow it down i mean how long did i take for this like a minute a minute and a half maybe i don't know but yeah, you can slow it down and you know people will still be baffled but it's super simple doesn't require much that's the original trick you'll notice that what i had done was i did use two sealed vaults two agendas but i misled you to believe that both agendas were a hostile takeover specifically a hostile takeover and basically i added this extra wrinkle to the end where oh, it was a hostile takeover, but it's a specific kind of takeover and is a completely different card. So I added that. And by the way, doing this increases the complexity of setup and the sequence of things that you have to do. But I was like, I did it because I was like, man, this is going to be so cool. So I really enjoyed Android Netrunner as a theme and a game. So I really wanted to make like the Android Netrunner tricks and stories that I associated with these like really interesting and so I wanted to make these like a little bit more fleshy if you will I want to make these tricks a little bit more fleshy <laughs> I don't know if I was ever going to say that but you know I've said those words now and I'm going to put them on the internet so they're going to be out there the runners are basically hackers trying to hack into corporation servers to try and you know get their secrets and all that and the Wayland Corporation, which is basically the corporation that has these agendas in them, which is the green identification, they are a big greedy corporation, and that's kind of like their MO, right? So some of the other corporations, they have different kinds of qualities about them. So basically, money and greed is pretty much Wayland Corporation's thing. Takeovers, sealed vaults, all totally in their wheelhouse. Totally like the original trick the Overture version. The reason why I don't like to do Harapan Ong's version is because there is something additional about the trick that when you do it to have the one-two punch, it kind of takes away from that like speed at which you can just do a quick version of this. In the spirit of making something more fleshy, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to use that word not. In the spirit of making something a little bit more prolonged, enjoyable and stuff, I tried to do a version of the trick that incorporated this other bonus card that, you know, I would hide from you for a while. And so I thought that that was super interesting. And that was kind of like my addition and take on it. I don't think there was too much issue performing it. I don't think I got too frustrated with this one, but I did do it uh, more than a few times. I think I practiced it like four or five times and then I probably recorded, I don't know, five or six times. So probably about a dozen times. The other thing about this, this is the first Android Netrunner trick that I am vlogging about. So let's address the artwork. Artwork's amazing, it's great. Sucks for doing magic because it's one directional from the front or the back and it's full bleed image. So if you remember my complaints from, I think when I talked about Marvel Overpower, those cards were also full bleed. The other thing about these cards is that they are completely smooth. They are not like playing cards at all. So, <laughs> and when you get cards from different expansions, some of them had different print runs and it's just like, oh no, the quality is a little bit different. So, and then by the way, if you actually ever played this game and you got promo cards like from a tournament or something, the promo cards were just cut differently. The sizes of the cards were not the same. Like promo cards ended up being like bigger than regular cards. And I was just like, you have to play even casually in sleeves. And it's like, if you just buy the game just to play casually and you're not into buying sleeves to protect your cards, it's like, 
I mean, non-issue for me, I've been a card gamer through and through my entire life, but like for somebody who's just trying to get into the game, it was like a weird barrier to entry. I guess they wouldn't be entering tournaments and getting promo cards or anything, but all right. So we talked a little bit about Android Netrunner, about Harapan Ong's King's Overture, about Principia, about Max Maven, about Overture, about Phil Goldstein, and trying to add theme to everything. Oh man, man, we covered a lot today. I don't know. I'm super excited about this one. All right. That's all I've got for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. You have a glorious day. Thanks for watching.